go. Okay, so we left off the fundamental counting principle, abbreviate FCP. It's the number of ways events can happen. Okay, and when we think of events, we really think of combined events. <clears throat> Sometimes they're called actions, but, and usually it, it would be for two or more events to happen. So it's very simple. Uh, let's say that you go to a restaurant and you have three main courses to choose from and four sides. Now let's throw in uh, five beverages. So you have three different actions that are happening, okay? It's real simple. You multiply the number of ways each action should happen. Or I should say, let me say can happen. All right, so you're saying, oh, uh, and you go to a restaurant, and uh, um, if you're like my wife a little bit, she likes to take her time as far as, uh, is that okay, honey, that I said yeah. that? <laughs> In deciding, so how many different choices are there? <laughs> there are three times four times five, or you can multiply it in any order. There's 120 different possible ways you know, if you don't believe me, you could test it, right? Three main courses, let's say chicken, beef, and fish. Four sides, let's say, uh, you know, whatever. Broccoli, corn, you know, two, uh, five different beverages. And you say, okay, well, I could get the beef with the broccoli with the water. Or I could get the chicken with the corn. If you look at all possibilities, 120 different ways. So, real easy, fundamental counting principle. All right. We can also use built into some pro <coughs> excuse me some probabilities are the fundamental counting principle. So let's say that we want to find the probability that. We order steak, corn, and root beer randomly. Meaning, you know, we're picturing a K. I mean, even though we generally don't go randomly, but let's just say somebody says, you know what, I really don't care what I order, right? I'm in the mood for anything. And they say, you know what? We're going to have three hats, okay? One hat's going to have the three main courses. One hat is going to have the four sides. And one hat is going to have the five beverages. I want you to pull out something from each hat, and that is going to determine what I order. And you ask the question, well, assuming the steak, corn, and root beer are in each of these hats, right, as one of the options, What's the probability that we get steak, corn, and root beer? Well, we can look at this a couple ways. One is that there's only, thinking in terms of the sample size, right? The sample size, there's 120 possibilities, right? I mean, we could write out the sample size, all the different possibilities. <clears throat> and this is just one of those. So if you think of the equally likely outcomes, it's one out of 120. But very often, you, you don't have the luxury of doing it in that manner, okay? So the idea here is, let's find another way to do that. Well, another way to determine that 1 out of 120 is to use a couple concepts that we've already used, okay? One is 
the is to multiply probabilities together and actually I'm not sure if I I, I think I touched on that in a prior section um, but that's just where you multiply probabilities together and the other is to use the idea of the um, fundamental counting principle so um, let me let me strike that a second I'm sorry I, I kind of worded that poorly we're going to just do that in terms of probabilities okay um, and that is that the probability of two or more things happening is to multiply all probabilities involved. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, if we want to know the probability of getting st steak, corn, and root beer all pulled, we would take 1 over 3 for the steak, because there's three main courses, 1 over 4 for the corn, and 1 over 5 for the beverage. If you multiply that together, you get 1 over 120. Okay, so what, what I had started to say earlier, I was trying to tie in the idea of the fundamental counting principle with probabilities. And I, I wanted to alert you to mistakes that I often see, all right? And here's what it is. You see these three, four, and five occurring, right? Two different ways of arriving at this one out of 120. Let's go over them both because it's very important. The one way is say, well, okay, let's look at it in terms of sample size. There's 120 different possible combinations of courses, sides, and beverages, and steak, corn, and root beer is one of them. So it says one out of 120. It's the idea of equally likely outcomes. The other is multiplying probabilities, okay? You see this three, four, and five occurring, but they occur kind of in a different context. They occur as multiplying the different ways we can do each of these three things, and you multiply them together. So you, you, it built, you know, the fundamental counting principle says to, this is the number of ways something can happen. These are probabilities. So two different terms. And the reason that I want to distinguish this is I will see people making mistakes because, uh, for example, I'll ask a question, what is the probability of something like this? And I'll see an answer of 120. No, it's not 120. It's one out of 120. Okay. Or I've seen <laughs> the reverse. I'll ask the question, how many ways can something happen? And I'll see an answer of 1 over 120. No, this is a probability. This is a number of ways. Two different things. You see that 120 occurring in both. So I want you to make sure you distinguish between number of ways and probability. But notice this number of ways comes up in the denominator for the probability, okay? But two very basic principles. All right, so I'm going to erase just a little bit more here and go over one other problem, and that kind of involves several things that we have talked about. If you understand this problem, I think you should understand everything else because it's, I would say, maybe the most complex. Um, just give me a second here to uh, to dry this. We're kind of limited with board space. So let's say that, let's assume that we have um, five balls in a hat. Two are red. And we want to find... Okay, so we're going to uh, uh, pull a ball four times with replacement, and we want to find the probability 
of getting two red balls. Okay? Five balls in a hat, two of them are red. It doesn't matter what the other ones are. Maybe they're blue, something else, but they're non-red. We're going to pull a ball four times with replacement, meaning we're going to replace the ball each time. Find the probability of two red balls. Okay, this is a little tricky, but we're going to combine some concepts, and let's think this through, all right? Very often, the best way to approach uh, problems, I mean, this can be true in any branch of mathematics or even anything you're doing, but particularly in statistics, is to write down examples, okay? So even if you're not sure where to start, and sometimes just getting started, you know, gives you, is kind of a catalyst. So you say, well, okay, let, let's envision a scenario where that might happen. Well, you might get red, then red, then non-red, we'll call non-red NR, and non-red, okay? So that might happen, right? And that's a scenario where you get, <clears throat> excuse me, exactly two red balls. And so when we say two, we're talking about exactly, okay? So this is one way, all right? Now, we could go further. So what's another way? Well, we might get a red and then a non-red and then a red and then a non-red. That's another way that that can happen. Okay. Okay. Now, and there are other ways, but let's stop there for a second. So, can we find the probability of this one in particular? Yeah, that's actually pretty easy. Now, when we write this down, it's understood that we're talking about an order, right? I mean, inherent in the problem is not an order, but in these specific examples is an order. So if we say we can get a red, then a red, then a non-red, then a non-red, we are talking about an order of red, red, non-red, non-red. Okay, so that's important. Well, what's the probability that a first one is red? That's easy. Two out of five. What's the probability that the second one's a red? That's easy. Two out of five. Why is it two out of five? Because we are replacing. What's the probability that the third one is non-red? That's easy. It's three out of five. What's the probability that the fourth one is non-red? That's easy. That's three out of five. Let's see here. 25 times 20, denominator is 625, the numerator is 36. That's the probability of getting red, red, non-red, non-red. Okay. Well, what this one also, I'm not going to write it out, but you can easily see. What's going to happen? We're going to have red, non-red, red, non-red. We're going to have two-fifths, three-fifths, two-fifths, three-fifths. We're going to have the same four numbers in a different order. This one is going to be... 36 out of 625, okay? All right, well, how many different ways can this happen, okay? Well, now we use the idea of combinations, okay? Uh, and I want to use that term, well, uh, you know, combination is, it's not a combination problem per se, but inherent in this is a combination. So, when you think about it, you want to get exactly two red balls out of four, okay? The nature of that is the combination of four things taken two at a time, okay? So that's going to be 4C2, okay? The combination of four things taken two at a time. And I want to I wanna try to give you a specific example as we finish this, okay? So what is 4C2? 4C2, if we use the formula, is 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Very easy. You're plugging in numbers. This is cookbook. This ends up to be 6, okay? So there are six ways that we have 4C2. Now, let, let, let's think about 
again, sometimes you know, I would I would advise my students to think of examples to, to try to you know crystallize this. What are we really doing if we have four C two? Okay, well, let's change the problem a little bit. Let's say that we have four different coins, right? We have, or better yet, four different numbers, okay? Four numbers in a hat, one, two, three, four. And you're going to take any two of those numbers. And you say, how many different ways can we take any two of those numbers? Well, you could take a one and a two. You could take a one and a three. You could take a one and a four. You could take a two and a three. You could take a two and a four. You can take a three and a four. Now, notice I didn't say you could take a 2 and a 1, because a 2 and a 1 is the same as a 1 and a 2, right? Because we said that we're just asking for the number of ways we could take any two of those four. And taking any two of those four, a 1 and a 2 is the same situation as taking a 2 and a 1. That's very important, okay? So order doesn't matter in the inherent in this question. That's 4C2. Now, how do we relate this to this? Here's why, and it's, it's a little bit tricky. Notice I emphasize we could have a 1 and a 2, 1 and a 3, 1 and a 4, 2 and a 3, 2 and a 4, 2, 3 and a 4. Well, this isn't the same type of thing happening where the reds could occur. The reds, or the non-reds, take your pick. But let's focus on the reds. They could occur in the 1 and 2 position, the 1 and 3 position the one and four position, the two and three position, the two and four position, the three and four position. There are six ways. Let's not bother writing them all out, right? We'd be, especially for bigger problems, we'd be there all day. There are six ways you can do this. If you don't believe me, write out the other four. Each of these six ways have a 36 out of 625 chance of happening. To finish this, what's the probability of two red balls? It's equal to 36 over 625 plus 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 36 over 625. 36 plus 36 plus 36 plus... That's 2, uh, 16 over 6. 25, we can make that a decimal or a percentage if we wanted to. Now, one other thing. Why are we allowed to add these numbers together? Because you can, if you're talking about the probability of several things happening, this gets back to over here, the right side of the board. The probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Now, one thing I didn't mention, keep in mind this is kind of a crash course, but I'll mention it now, is if you have mutually exclusive events, okay, mutually exclusive means that if one thing happens, other things cannot happen, okay, you can get rid of this probability of A and B. Why is this important? Because the events of these six things happening, right, I wrote down two of them, they're all mutually exclusive. Because if this happens, R, R, N, R, N, R, this cannot have happened, right? Or the other things could not have happened. So every time that we write down one of those, they are mutually exclusive with the other five possibilities. So these six possibilities, of which I wrote down two, are all mutually exclusive with the other. That allows us to add these numbers outright, the idea of mutually exclusive. It's a little bit tricky to to wrap your head around, um, but that's what this comes down to. So before we end, one thing, I'm going to have another video because this, this last part <laughs> might have confused some people. Uh, I, I'm going to go over another example, but we'll do that in another video. But I do want to mention that um, uh, the idea of why this is important, okay? So let's just say, you know, because we don't want to have to write out possibilities, but let's just say that I change this to... 24 balls and seven are red and we pull a ball 13 times and we want to find the probability of four red balls okay in fact you know what i'm going to make that my next video uh but you'll see and of course you can't 
in this case, you could have written out all six, right? But in this case, you know, there's hundreds of what I don't know. I haven't done the numbers yet. I just made these up. But there's too many to list out. But if you think through it in the terms of the combinations and then the probabilities and the mutual exclusive, you will see it works out just like this one. Practice makes perfect. So again, I know this is just one example. Some of you might be confused. Stay tuned. I'm going to have another one just like this that hopefully ties everything up if you miss something the first time. So anyway, again, this is kind of a crash course. Uh, this might have been several hours uh, of a, a particular statistics course, um, but I will, uh, I'm will. i going to follow up with another example. In the meantime, if you have questions, feel free to ask, and I'll see you soon on Statistics Quest. Thank you.